Welcome to another edition of Buffalo Game Day Recap. I'm AJ Feldman. Joining me shortly from Miami is Sports, Sports Director Thad Brown. The Bills defense was dominant in a 35-0 shutout win over the Dolphins, their first shutout since 2016. They forced three turnovers, recorded six sacks, and Tua Tonga Viola was knocked out of the game in the second series. And while the offense did not bring their A game, maybe barely even just their C game, they still found a way to put up 35 points. We now bring in Thad live from Miami. Now, there are a few sayings you hear around the league. A sign of a great team is blowing out teams in the games that you should win. And also winning when you don't have your best performance. Well, Thad, the Bills kind of did both of those things today on the road against a division rival. Yeah, and especially the latter part of it is the one that impresses me more. Back in the offseason when the Bills signed Emmanuel Sanders, Bills GM Brandon Bean said that one of the reasons he wanted to make that signing is because he didn't want to lose the team's fastball, implying that Josh Allen throwing and having great receivers is what this team does best, and that's still true. Well, today the Bills didn't have their fastball, and they still dominated the Dolphins, what we think is a pretty good division rival, with all their off-speed stuff, with defense, with run game. And, you know, even though th this win wasn't how you drop a normal Bills win, it might be even more impressive. I, I can't lie. I walked away from this game looking up at the scoreboard a few times thinking 35 nothing didn't feel like that at all. Big part of it was the end of that first half, which for whatever long it took, it felt like 119 hours. After it was 14 nothing, that thing was a slog. It was agony. So that totally soured me on the whole process. I don't care what the Bills did. It was going to feel kind of bad because of how bad the end of that first half was. I mean, if you dropped somebody in in that game at 14 zip, didn't tell them what the score was, they would have thought these two teams were the worst two in the division. But after that, the Bills did a nice job, obviously rallying that end. The uh, drive that opened the second half was huge to kind of put this game away, and they sealed it from there. And being able to win this game with defense and run game, or as Sean McDermott kind of called it, left-handed, like I said, I think was really, really impressive. And the theme for the Bills defensively in this game, or at least in the week of practice leading up to this game, was they wanted to have fun. Well, boy, did they right from the start. A couple blitzes early, got sacks. They got a quick touchdown from Devin Singletary. Second possession, A.J., like you said, another A.J. or A.J. Epinesa rush, knocked Tua out of the game. The Bills had another touchdown. And, and really, although it took a while to get going, from there the route was kind of on. A huge bounce-back game for the Bills coming off that season-opening loss against the Steelers. And it was in large part because this defense just did not let the Dolphins breathe. Frazier was dialing it up, man. Um, there's a few times we came up the field, and I was I was uh, just dapping dapping Frazier up because it's just excellent calls, uh, mixing it up, sending sending guys. Um, you know, we were able to um, get a lot of pressure on first, second down, and also on third down. You know, the, the guys up front were eating. I did like the start. Um, there was, uh, like I said, there was a uh, I could feel them in, in pregame. I could feel they were ready, and um, give credit to, to to our guys. I mean, they they put in a really good week of work and. More importantly, the focus and the mindset. Hats off to our guys up front uh, and our running backs for um, you know, establishing a run game early. That, ha that helps us out so much. They did a hell of a job you know, protecting all day. Um, and again, our, our guys made some plays. And to feel the way we feel, um, and knowing we could have played better, winning 35-0, to zero, I, you know, I think that's a good problem to have. AJ, we're not going to talk a whole lot about Josh Allen's game because it just wasn't that good. But the one thing I do want to say is that when the Bills needed a couple key plays, he did make them. The throw to Stephon Diggs that finished off that drive, got the Bills in the end zone, was classic Josh rolling, 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 and finding a guy across his body. And then the throw to Dawson Knox that, again, got the Bills in the end zone in the red zone. Superb throw. So although, look, this was probably a C-minus Josh Allen game, and we might have talk about Allen and where he is as a quarterback, where this offense is, as we go further down the road, at least for today, when the Bills needed a couple plays, he made them. AJ, you're taking this one. Yeah, and I want to touch on Josh Allen for a second, because like you said, he did not play very well from start to finish. He had his moments, like you said, the Diggs touchdown threw, uh, threw a couple touchdowns as well. I think one of the, the strangest things, maybe a little bit concerning if you want to put it that way, this struggling Josh Allen was not the typical struggling Josh Allen that we've seen. It wasn't really hero ball. It wasn't really him trying to do too many things. It wasn't really you know, him just being bad Josh Allen. It was being a different kind of bad Josh Allen. You know, he was throwing a lot of under throws several times, had one interception, could have had probably two more. And this was an inaccurate Josh Allen. And, you know, two weeks into the season, we still really haven't seen Josh Allen play very well. I'm saying Josh Allen a lot because he's the Bills quarterback and the offense goes through him. 
and they were able to get it done with the running game. But like you said, that's their fastball. They can't really rely on that. Once again, they didn't really find much down the field. They only had the one big play to Stephon Diggs, and that was an underthrow as well. That could have easily been a touchdown. Stephon Diggs had to go up and get that, like the great receiver that he is, where that could have been an interception as well. So two, two weeks into the season, we still have not seen the runner-up MVP that we saw last year, where, yes, it's great that they won 35 nothing, but going forward into these, some of these tougher opponents when teams are actually playing you know, the way they think that they should, um, you'd love to see better from Josh Allen. And I thought another thing that was good for the Bills, their second half adjustments. Josh Allen said that they changed things up a little bit, Sean McDermott as well. Touchdowns on three of their, fir three of their four drives in the second half. We've seen this team struggle in the third quarters. Good to see them flip the script on that one. And then, like you said, the defense just playing fantastic. One, sh one touchdown allowed last week, a shutout today. They're doing this against offenses that aren't playing well. Steelers ha didn't have a great game offensively the last week because of the Bills. And, you know, Tua and Jacoby Brissett both looked rattled all day long. They get Taylor Heineke and David Mills up next with Tyrod Taylor getting knocked out of today's game. We'll see if David Mills or, or Tyrod Taylor plays for the Texans in two weeks. But this is going to give them a chance to build some momentum into the meat of their schedule coming up after that. So you like to see the defense um, getting some positive momentum, getting some turnovers, getting a roll before they face the Chiefs and the Titans and, and teams like that. Let's go back out to Thad where the run game as a whole, they were able to overcome a ton of adversity in this game in more ways than one. Yeah, it was surprising how many different things the run game had to deal with. Real quick, though, I just want to point out, when it comes to Josh Allen, two teams they've played, Steelers and the Dolphins. Steelers' defense is good up front. Dolphins do have two really good corners in Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, and I thought both those guys actually played like it in this one. Now, as for that run game, you know, the Bills scored three touchdowns on the ground, and shockingly, Josh Allen had zero of them. Zach Moss had a huge finish to the second half, but I think a, a big part of this game was um, the fact that the Bills scored touchdowns, obviously, without Josh Allen. They also averaged nearly five yards per carry. And even more impressive, they put new run plays in on Saturday. Josh Allen revealed that after the game. Allen praised the offensive line for rolling with the punches, but Deion Dawkins said it was a team effort. All pros so like we learn like how to deal with it and we have a great like quarterback and great guys on the offense that make it easier for us they're up there and they, they well I think that the quarterbacks are the most smartest guys in the building so when they can like just put like little hints like our right, guys da, 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 this is what we're doing that's cool and that's exactly and what Josh did being an alignment is not easy by any means you know, there's so many different bolts flying at you and uh, you know they get the blame sometimes when when they really shouldn't you know people don't know our blocking schemes and our run our run schemes and where our, where our fits are supposed to be and stuff like that um, so again these are my guys. It has been a roller coaster 24 hours for Bills running back Zach Moss, who buried his aunt just yesterday and then began this game with a fumble. But he rebounded with two tough touchdown runs, something Dawkins said Moss called on the sideline. Moss said, look, and the next time I touch and this ball, I'm going to make it count. And he did that two mm -hmm. more times. And uh, he ran behind his big guys, and he just put his head down. And That last run was sweet, And too. kept on chucking them off. I just wanted to come out here and, you know, just uh, play the game. Um, had a rough start to it, but, you know, just being able to go back out there and finish the right way and, you know, the coaches allowing me to go out and do that uh, was big. I thought it was important that he was able to reset and uh, remain mentally tough, come back, and he made some really tough runs, um, particularly the last one at the end on the touchdown. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great message to everyone and anyone on our football team that you gotta be, you're going to make some mistakes and you've got to be able to come back and, and get your game back. That's what your teammates need from you. I said to Moss after the uh, game, I said, you know, what have the last 24 hours been like for you emotionally? You've got the highest of highs, some of the lowest of lows. And he said, look, I'll sum it up in one word. It's just life. He said, I'm thankful to be able to play this game because there are so many other more important things in the world. And he said, I'm blessed to be able to have the game that I did in this one. Big comeback for Moss. Look, this is a guy that had a lot of trouble in preseason with injuries, trouble getting on the field, was a healthy scratch week one. This was a big moment for him. For sure. Back to AJ now in the studio. Time to look at the numbers from this one. Yeah, taking a look at those stats, Josh Allen, not his finest hour, completes just over 50% of his passes, throws a pick, but gets those two touchdowns. As Thad mentioned, Zach Moss, two scores on the day, but Devin Singletary, also a great performance, 82 yards total, highlighted by 
the 46-yard touchdown run on their second play from scrimmage. And Stephon Diggs had only four catches, but one for a touchdown and another that big 41-yarder. For the Dolphins, after Tua got knocked, knocked out, Jacoby Brissett threw a bunch, finished with 169 yards, but he was under duress all day through an interception. Jalen Waddell finished with six catches, but mostly underneath stuff, just 48 yards. And the Bills defense, six total sacks, two forced fumbles, a pick, all in a shutout effort. Now, one of those sacks was by Taron Johnson, the nickel cornerback who shined for the second straight week. Last week, he was praised by Leslie Frazier for his physicality. Today was his teammates. Buffalo Kickoff Live contributor Matt Perino was about to ask a question about Johnson. Jordan Poyer did not let him finish. As a, as a dog. As a dog. As, I mean, he's, a, he's a dog. And pound for pound, just the best nickel in the league. Just dude just comes to work every single day, just believing that he's the best. And, I mean, he went out there, and to me, he, I mean, it was amazing watching him play today. You ain't even got to finish a sentence, but just the way he played today was incredible. It's incredible. It's really funny how the Bills secondary just loves talking about Johnson. They did so last year after his pick six against the Ravens. I feel like they kind of see him as a, a little brother. They love hyping him up. Thad, another notable name from this one, Greg Rousseau making his return to Miami where he played college ball. Lots of friends and family in the stands. They put, he put on a show for them recording two sacks in this one. Yeah, he had two of the three sacks among the defensive linemen in this game. Justin Zimmer had the other one. Bills had three of their six sacks on blitzes from defensive backs and linebackers. A little bit of a shock there. But for Rousseau, who had a very, very quiet game against the Steelers in the opener, this was a great way for him to bounce back individually. It was a lot of fun out there, you know, but really, like, even though I might get the sack, really just a testament to the secondary, the linebackers, the D-line, all of us getting there. It's really like a group effort. So some, some people might get the numbers, but really it's the whole, it's all 11 of us. Sometimes they come in bunches, right, and like turnovers. And, um, but, again, it's got to it's gotta work together. The coverage has to help the, the rush, and they have to work together, and, and I thought we did that. And then I thought uh, – we did a good job of just rolling fresh bodies in there also when we can get them in some passing situations. Happy for Greg. Uh, you know, we got some guys, some big guys up front that can get out to the quarterback. So anytime we get up by a couple scores and, it, you know, force them to one-dimensional football, passing the football, um, you know, those guys up front are going to eat. So good for Greg, um, you know, and, and just happy to see those boys up there eating. Now, as much as Greg Rousseau had the sacks in this game, to me, the guy I was most impressed with, A.J., was A.J. Epinesa, who really was the one who applied the pressure. Rousseau kind of did this in college, too. Two years ago at Miami, he had 15 sacks, and a majority of them were kind of clean-up plays, coverage sacks, quarterback scrambling into them. Both of the sacks he had in this game were that today. They get a little pressure on his own late, late, late in this game, but for the most part, the guy I come out of this game thinking, wow, he had a great game, it's A.J. Epinesa who had zero sacks. Yeah, and, you know, Greg Rousseau, like you mentioned, he did that two years ago in college, getting all those sacks. This year he gets two games. Maybe that's just one of his strengths. You know, certain guys, they find a way to get things done. They get to the football. They get to the quarterback. And, you know, if things funnel to them, that's great. You know, one, one player I think about uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Minka Fitzpatrick, you know, great safety, Pro Bowl caliber safety, all pro safety. He is just always in the right place at the right time. You know, tipped balls, fumbles, they just always seem to find him. Maybe Greg Rousseau just has some sort of a knack to find the quarterback when, you know, blitzes come, things just come to him. So maybe that's what the Bills need. You know, last year, Jerry Hughes, he was creating pressure all throughout the season. Any metric you looked at, top five, top ten, and, you know, pass rush win rate, quarterback pressures, wasn't always turning that into sacks. So if you can throw many guys in there, and I think that might be part of it, um, the fact that A.J. Epinesa and Greg Rousseau had these great games, they're young bodies. They can stay out there, especially in a game like today in Miami where things were hot. And, you know, you kind of need that endurance to keep going all throughout when you're pass rushing so much in a game like this. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that kind of thing can be a skill. I'm not going to sit here and say Greg Rousseau has it as a skill after one game and two sacks in the NFL. But maybe, and look, if there are other guys who are applying pressure, Jerry Hughes has had a good start to the season, Mario Addison's been very good, then sure, if you got Greg Rousseau, who's a really good cleanup guy, well, then that's fine. That'll work out. Sacks are sacks. The Bills won't really care who makes them. But I know fans will want to all talk about the, the first-round pick and the two sacks and all that. Pump the brakes on Greg Rousseau, at least so far. Bottom line from this one, A.J. Bills had a good rebound 
um, got back on track. They're, you know, back to being the dominant team in the AFC East. And I think we're back to full steam ahead towards the Super Bowl run to Los Angeles. Whether we get there, who knows? But it's week two. The Bills win a Super Bowl. No one's going to ask you to paint a picture about what week two looked like. It was just a win. It was a dominating win, and it was a good one for the Bills. I'm going to be talking on the News 8 Facebook page in a couple minutes. If anyone wants to keep this conversation going, ask me some questions about the game, we'll do that for a few minutes here from Hard Rock Stadium. But other than that, I am done. Live in Miami, I'm Thad Brown. AJ, back to you. Thank you very much, Thad. And you know, it's funny. Last week, we talked about how that loss to the Steelers could have had some long-term implications in the number one seed with the Chiefs and, you know, getting those first round buys and things like that. Well, this week they beat the team that was the only team in the AFC East who had a win last week, the Dolphins, who beat the Patriots last week. They go into Miami, they get that win. So in terms of winning the division, this is as big of a win as last week might have been as a loss for getting that number one seed. So certainly the Bills take care of business. You feel a lot better coming out of this one certainly maybe the opposite as the way you did last week against the Steelers. Well, next week, the Washington football team comes to Highmark Stadium. Ryan Fitzpatrick is out. No Fitzmagic. It'll be Taylor Heineke under center as the football team is coming off a win against the Giants on Thursday Night Football. We will see you then to wrap things up at 745 here at RochesterFirst.com. For Thad Brown, I'm AJ Feldman. Have a great rest of your night, and thanks for watching Buffalo Game Day Recap. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and our apps for both news and weather.